appreciate that warm welcome. You can be seated. That's beautiful. I just, um, I don't get in, uh, invitations like this very often to churches this, uh, at this place that you're at. And uh, I certainly don't get introduced like that very often. I can't wait to hear myself today. <laughs> I love Eric and Lindsay and their family so much. And my wife and I just always find it a great privilege to get to be with them wherever they are. And I remember back a couple of years ago, about this time of the year, we were with you at the other property. And um, I, there were some things that occurred to me. I just, I just thought about a, how precious it was to get to be there. And very special atmosphere was there. And, and uh, I said one night to you then, I said, you know, this is a very, th you, you'll go beyond this, but um, this, this will be always a very special place because the Spirit of God makes it special. And then I walked in here today and seen this beautiful property and this great facility that God's blessed you with and all the people here. My, it's just amazing to see what God is doing. And uh, I believe that we're into something here that Jesus is going to get all the praise, all the honor, all the glory for. I'm just glad I got to be a part of it. How about you? Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a great big cheer. Everybody honor him today. Glory to God. This is a wonderful ministry. My wife is with me all the way here. She's a Mobile girl. All my girls that are in my family were born in Mobile, and mostly raised there for part of their lives anyway. But my wife, Hope, is here. I want her to stand up right there and let you see her. Amen. And um, since we were here last, the last night of the meeting we had here in 2013, uh, she told me that night that she had a lump in her body and we went straight home. She was diagnosed with third 3B stage uh, breast cancer. And since that time, she's undergone 24 rounds of chemo. She went through uh, sur radical surgery. She went through 37 radiation treatments. And last year, she went through the darkest storm of her life, of our lives. But God raised her up and gave us great grace, great grace. And so she wanted to be here to share this experience with you because it, it got pretty dark. Has it ever got dark at your place where you've been? Well, let me tell you something. If it's dark today, you just hang on because the Bible said in Psalms 119 that the entrance of thy word giveth light. Now, people can tell you lots of encouraging things, but I, I want to tell you something other than just some, uh, some quip that comes from Reader's Digest or a magazine that I've read. I'm going to give you this today. And I'm going to try to be very deliberate. I'm going to be try to be very deliberate and very, very uh, um, selective. But I'm going to say everything I say on purpose because I believe that God wants to do something great for people that gather in meetings just like this. I, I'm an evangelist. I, that's what I am by, by my gifting. You know, you put, a, you put a, anybody here knows about hunting dogs. If you put a duck dog in with a, uh, a, a bunch of uh, some other kind of dog, he'll get frustrated. He, he has no place there. and It's just his element. That's who he is. And, and you got to put him in his element. And that's what I am. A few years ago, churches decided they were going to lay all of us evangelists off. And uh, going to do something else. But God didn't lay us off. We're still part of the five-fold ministry of the church. We're in there. And there are scriptural parameters and definitions of what an evangelist is supposed to be. And I just fall into that place. That's what I do. And at the end, when I get finished here, I want to pray for you. <clears throat> because I believe that God's going to do some things for people here. That we're going to tie and link to what we see here in the scripture today. Now, I don't know what you may be dealing with, but I'm not going to turn to this scripture. I'm going to have you turn to another place in a minute. But there are people that find themselves where David described himself, himself in Psalms, the 40th division, verse 1. 
And here, here's what he said. He said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings and put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto God. And many, he said, would see it and would fear and trust in the Lord. He said he would take it and turn it into something he could give away to others. But he found himself in a horrible pit. People come to churches like ours, like yours, all across this country in, in, in uh, uh, a momentum of heart. They want to worship and give God place in their lives. But many of them are worshiping through storms. Many of you today are worshiping through heartbreak and through sickness and through pain and other situations. And some of you may find yourself where David found himself in a horrible pit. But how many knows God has a way out? And he's going to pick you up and set you on a high place and give you the thing that you find so necessary and needful today. I want you one more time, if you will, just lift your right hand and pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, we need today what we cannot humanly produce. We're not even going to try to do that. I'm asking you for anointing, Father, that will destroy yokes, fetters, chains, and shackles that bind people. Loose them and let them go. Father, let holy oil appear on us now. Let the fire of God burn in our souls and Lord, as we come to a moment when we release our faith in this book, God, we expect miracles, we expect deliverance, and we believe you now for that anointing to set people free. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name, and everybody believe with me, say amen. 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 I'm going to read from the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus chapter 12 is where I want to take you today. Exodus 12 and verse number 3 is where I'll begin to share with you from the scriptures this morning. Exodus 12 verse 3 said, I'll give you a moment to turn. How many brought your Bible one more time? Say amen. amen. Wonderful. Exodus 12 verse number 3. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take them Every man a lamb. Take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls, or let two houses share a lamb if the lamb's too big for one house. Verse 5 said, Your lamb shall be without blemish. Without blemish, a male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or the goats. And then in verse number 12, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Look at verse 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in uh, unto your houses to smite you. Verse 26, and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what does this mean? What is this service that we're doing? This exercise, what, what's it significant of? You shall answer them and say, it's the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshipped. And if you love the Bible, would you say amen? Amen. amen. I love the scriptures. 
I, I just want to preach to you here a little bit for a while here this morning on something I've been preaching for many years. I got really stirred years ago in the 1990s when I first began to make journeys overseas and preach to people that had never heard the gospel. I wanted to know more about Jesus. I wanted to know more about his work and about his person. I wanted to learn of him. That's his command to us is take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burdens light. Now I want to share Jesus because when you preach Christ, God gives men the faith to be saved. When we preach Christ, God does in the hearts of people what it takes to receive Bible deliverance. And so I begin to research and do some different uh, uh, presses toward trying to gain what I knew only would be by God or revelation of Christ in my spirit and in my life. And I begin to tell people what I knew about Jesus and about the work of Jesus, and that included the blood of Jesus. I just read to you the institution of a Jewish feast day called Passover. Passover was not instituted in a time of, of great financial proliferation for the Jews. It was not instituted in a time of great victory necessarily. It was introduced under a threat. It was brought to them under the gun when they were facing certain destruction, but yet they were still slaves in the land of Egypt. And now not only are the Egyptians a problem, but God is doing a thing that could present a problem. Judgment's coming in the land. And God said all the firstborn in the land of Egypt are going to be smitten on this night of Passover in Exodus 12. And he said the firstborn of all living creatures is going to die. He said when the destroyer passes through, there is a darkness that's going to settle upon the land of Egypt and everybody's going to be at threat. Not just the Egyptians, but the, uh, the Hebrews as well. You see, the Hebrews were no more righteous than the Egyptians were. They were all sinful before God and everybody was sort of in, uh, had an element of threat hanging over their head. And I want to tell you, you and I were born under a certain sign of judgment. Every one of us in this room was destined and doomed to judgment. None of us we're ever going to get left out of that. We all had it coming. People often say, why me, Lord? Why me? That's not the original question. The real question is, why not me? Because I was born in sin. David said, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. There's none of us that were good. None of us. We were all shaping an iniquity. And Paul said in Romans 3 and 23 that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. He said in Romans 6, 23 that the payday that were, was in line for us was what they're facing. It was certain death. He said, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Oh, and I want to tell you, these in this passage of Exodus 12, it's a 911 scene in every household of the Egyptians from, from, the, from the ghettos all the way to the house of Pharaoh. There are firstborn of everything dying, the firstborn of cattle and sheep, and the firstborn of sons or daughters. They're, they're dying, and it's a dreadful situation, but there was a plan in place. It's a type of the work of Jesus. It's a type of what happened at the cross. That was a shedding of blood in this chapter, and there is a lamb of the first year, a male without blemish, that he's taken and he's slain. His blood's caught in a, in a, in a catch pan, if you will. And then he, they take hyssop, which is a stick, 
and it's got tiny branches and leaves and they dip it in this blood that's in this basin and they strike it upon the doorpost, upon the two side posts and upon the lintel overhead and to the sides of the entrance it's covered or sprinkled or stricken. Blood is actually stricken upon there and then stricken up overhead. You know what? It's, it's never put on the threshold because the blood's never to be trampled on. It's, it's always to be esteemed. No, it's upon the side post and upon the lintel. Amen. We're never to do, Hebrews said this, despite the spirit of grace and to trample underfoot the blood of Jesus wherewith we were sanctified and say it's an unholy thing. How many believe in God with me today? Say amen. Yeah, but this blood that's upon these houses, gee, or God, uh, it's all a type of Jesus' work that would come in days to come. And, and you understand probably many of you sitting in this room as much as I understand about this is a type. This is a foreshadowing. This is like undeveloped photograph negatives. Back before we had iPhone 6s and digital cameras, we had film cameras. And you got produced first a photo negative. Anybody old enough here to remember that? Well, there's not many people old enough to remember that. But you know what? You developed those photograph negatives and they were just shadows. The, the negatives were just, it was the reverse Light would come through and develop those photograph negatives and you'd get a picture, a hard copy picture. That's what this is. This is like an undeveloped photo negative of what happens when the blood of Jesus Christ is applied. These people are facing a darkness that they need confidence. And I want to tell you, you and I are facing some things, not the least of which is the judgment. When we stand before him, we will not stand there and say, I'm innocent, I'm guiltless. But when the, we stand before the high courts of God, he'll ask us how do we plead and we'll say, I plead the blood of the sinless sacrifice Jesus Christ uh, hallelujah that's what I'm going to plead I'm going to put my confidence in the blood I'm not putting my confidence in works I'm like those Egyptians, see. I'm no, I'm no more righteous than they were. I was born into sin. But you know what? Long before the need ever arose, God had a plan in place. I hear what Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, 19, and 20. He said, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed by silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot or blemish who was fairly foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you. Listen, there was a plan in place and there's a mystery of Christ and a mystery of his blood. Heaven knows there's mysteries in the Bible, say amen. There's things that we understand all too simple. It's ready. You know, some things are hidden, and some things are not hidden from you. Some things are hidden for you. The parables, the parables of Jesus are things hidden for certain ones to hear. Jesus didn't always speak in parables, but when he started speaking in parables, he never quit speaking in parables. He spoke in parables the rest of his ministry. And somebody said, oh, he was trying to make it simple for people and decided what he was doing in ministry wasn't working, and so he moved to parables. That's not what happened at all. No, no, no. In fact, his disciples says, why are you using parables? He said, these things are kept from the wise and the prudent, but he took them aside, and he began to Explain to them the things he was teaching in parables. It was hidden, but from those who had an honest and pure heart and wanted to hear, there's mysteries that God's willing to reveal. There's things God's trying to unfold, but I'm going to tell you, it comes to a certain condition of heart. It comes to us not a status of intellect, but a certain condition of heart. If you can believe, today you will see the glory of God 
it created church if you can believe if you've got a heart willing to receive I'm telling you the glory of the Lord is going to rise upon us and the power of the most high can break every yoke every fetter every shackle every chain and set you free how many has ever been set free from a dark bondage how many has ever been loose lift your head and wave it and praise him like that and glorify him hallelujah praise God praise God some things are still mysterious prayer is a mystery you don't understand prayer you know how it works you know what it is but you don't know how it, you don't know all about it I mean there's a God in heaven knows everything has all supply he could just meet needs if any of us never prayed but he wants us to pray praying in tongues is a mystery we don't understand that but you know what? We know what happens when men pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody says, I don't understand that, so I ain't going to do it. Do you understand how electricity runs through these lights at 60, at a 60 cycles per second, 120 volts? I don't understand that, but I don't see no need in sitting in the dark. Do you? Come on. I don't understand a lot of things. Prayer. Tongues is a mystery. Somebody says, I've got infallible proof. I can prove to anybody that there are three in the Godhead. I said, you can't prove everything like that. You've never seen God. You're just like me. You know what the Bible says. But the mystery of godliness is without controversy. A great mystery, Paul said. It's a mystery. There's a mystery Babylon. There's a mystery of the kingdom. There's a mystery of iniquity. There's mystery, mysteries, mysteries all in the Bible. There's a mystery of the gospel, a mystery of the Gentiles, a mystery of the Jews. There's mysteries that we just don't understand. But let me tell you, it begins to unfold. When God created this world, before the worlds were framed, that was a plan in place for your deliverance. God does not run around behind the devil playing catch up to him, trying to figure out what he's doing so he knows what to do next. That's not the way God works, is it? Come on. But before the need ever arose, God saw the need. God understood the complexity of the situation. He knew you were going to sin. People come down and can't let, raise their hands and they're, they're, they're defeated. And you say, what's the matter? Uh, I failed God. I disappointed God so bad. I let God down. Let me tell you something. You didn't let God down. Your, your relationship is broken. But it's on your end. It ain't on God's end. Say Amen. You see, expectations is what brings disappointment. God, wasn't God knew what I was before I ever sinned. Say amen. He didn't go, oh, I can't believe you did that. Well, what am I going to do now? That's not what he did. He didn't get all worried and flustered after you sinned. That was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world, before the need ever arose. Praise God. How many of you know there was a plan in place? <laughs> Whoa! And this is just a photograph negative of what was to come. You see, way before things were as they are, God created this earth and he called it in a Hebrew word. I'm, I'm no Hebrew scholar and listen, just hang on. Hang on, I'm not trying to drop my plow too deep here, but just hold on with me a minute. There, there's eight, there's 100 and, 240 families of words in the Hebrew language. And I, I don't know a lot about it. I'm, I'm doing good to get out good old American here in the service this morning. So I'm not going to try to teach you Hebrew. I will tell you this. In the Hebrew, there's 240 families of words. And those root words, those 240 roots are words that are like a wheel, a hub that has spokes coming off of them. And you can develop other words. Like, like the Hebrew word for blood is dam. It's spelled D-A-M, and the Hebrew calls it dom. The Hebrew word for red is dom, D-O-M. See, see a connection there? Yeah. Red, blood. And the word that we see when God creates this word has the word blood in it. This earth was spun into existence, created by God out of nothing, and he called it ah. Dhamma. The word for earth creation has in it the word blood. The Hebrew word for blood. And from the earth or from Adama, 
God scooped up some dust, formed a man, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. You know what the Hebrews call that man? Adam. We call him Adam. But the Hebrews say Adam. He's taken from Adama. Oh, it's a mystery. And the devil's scratching his head. The devil was there to see all this. Say, what's going on? I don't understand things that pertain to his creation and this blood thing. There's a blood thing going on here that is just a mystery. Everything that's living in terms of flesh has blood in it. Blood's there. And it begins to unfold. You get up to the flood and God said, take all these living creatures and uh, get them on the ark. And then after the ark comes to rest on the mountains of Ararat, they disembark from the ark and God establishes some laws and says seed time and harvest will always remain hot and cold, summer and winter. And whosoever sheds man's blood... By man shall his blood also be shed. He told Noah, said, don't eat the blood because life is contained therein. We'd find out that blood's very corruptible. It's very contaminable once it's outside the body. But you see, the blood of a human being is where the life is. And then later on in the law in Leviticus chapter 17, God said to Moses, the blood is not for food, but it's given to you for an atonement for the soul upon the altar. The blood is upon the altar to make an atonement for the soul. And the word atonement is another Hebrew word that just simply means covering, to cover completely. And God was saying in Exodus 12, the scriptures I read to you, when the destroyer comes through, he said, I will be a covering over you. I'm going to shelter you. I'm going to give you the confidence. You go inside those houses and you shut those doors and you put your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand and you partake of that Paschal feast. You eat that lamb roasted with all of its eyes and the pertinence and the legs thereof. Nothing's to be wasted with the bitter herbs and the unleavened bread. And he said you eat it with your shoes on with your staff in your hand stay ready to move because I got plans to get you out of here and take you someplace else there'll be people screaming all over Cairo there'll be people all over Egypt that will be wailing in fear and great agonizing terror but he said you're gonna be safe not because you're a Hebrew not because you're more righteous than the Egyptians. But when I see the blood, I am going to pass over you or be a covering over you. I'm going to protect you. Somebody said, you know, this world is getting so bad. Even private schools are not a place for our kids anymore. And things are so terrible and so hard. Can I tell you something? Here's what we're going to do. We're as mothers and fathers. These fathers took a lamb for a household and it was enough to cover their families. And every day we're going to lay our hands upon our sons and daughters and by faith we're going to do by our hearts and faith what they did with hyssop we're going to sprinkle them with blood and the blood of Jesus Christ I said the blood of Jesus Christ it's going to be enough it's going to give us confidence to move toward God and afford us a protection in these last and evil days you don't have to hang your head in anxiety and fear and depression. You got the blood of Jesus. It's efficacious. It means it still matters. It's still real. How many of you believe the blood of Jesus still matters? Yeah. We're going to apply the blood today. You see, where, it, where, it put, where fear plagues us, the devil attacks us in our thought lives. And where anxiety, depression, all the things that have become such a complex issue for so many people. 
You know where it really strikes at? That middle ground between your spirit and your soul. And, and, and your, your spirit, if you've been born of God, it's off limits to the devil. He can't come there. That's right. But Christians get in a mess, don't they? Not, the devil don't possess them. The devil doesn't move in. He, he, he's not stealing their salvation. That's not what's happening with all these people that are in such uh, traumatic pain. But something's happening. Their, their minds is where the battle is being waged. And see, the threshold between your spirit man and your soul is like where they put that blood on that doorpost and that lintel. You say, now, preacher, I got saved 20 years ago, and I've been saved ever since. The blood was applied, and that's enough for me. Well, let me tell you something. I want to keep it applied to the doorpost and to the lintel as I go out and as I come in. Come on. There's a threshold. There's a place. We need the blood of Jesus every day, y'all. Come on here. We need to recognize it and make much of it because God makes much of it. I said the Lord makes much of the blood. And I decided a long time ago, if you want to have church, make a big deal out of what God makes a big deal out of. A lot of churches making a big deal out of stuff God don't make a big deal out of. But I'm going to tell you something. When you make a big deal out of the blood of Jesus, you're making an issue out of what God says is a big deal to him. Help me pray, y'all. Come on, say praise God with me. Amen. And you see, when we do this by faith, we do this by faith. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 said that the accuser of our brethren has cast down the accuser that accused us night and day before God is cast down. And he said this, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and loved not their own lives unto their own deaths. They overcame the devil, the accuser. And that's what he's doing right now. Said he accused us before God night and day. Hey, the devil never shuts up, does he? Running his big mouth, accusing you, accusing you. And it's not, it's not just you that he's accusing you to. He gets in the presence of God where you want to come worship. God seems to be a problem for people. Not because he's made himself a problem, but their conscience is wounded. Their conscience is so messed up by their past fears and their past failures and they're so tied up in, in what they were they've taken their identity in their used to be's and their defeats but God has come today to deliver you and give you a new identity to make you a new creature 2 Corinthians 5 17 said if any man be in Christ he's a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new again Wave your hand like that and say, praise the Lord with me. Oh, he's good, isn't he? God is good. Yes, sir. All right, let me, let me try to bring this to a point that you can really lay, take a hold of it like this. The blood of Jesus has what we call efficacy. It's efficacious, which is a big $3 word that just simply means it still matters. It's not, it's not of some historical value. It still has efficacy. There's laws that were written in the 1700s in this nation. They're not outdated. The Constitution is still has efficacy. It has placement in our lives. The blood of Jesus, both forensically, spiritually, it has still has relevance and it still is something that is applied in a heaven realm. We don't sacrifice animals. We put our faith in the blood of Jesus. Years ago, back in 1995 or 6, it was in the late winter, early spring of the year. We were in a church 
and uh, had just returned from India. And um, God was doing some great things. It still had that missionary anointing kind of just flowing, you know, and it was, it was just wonderful. And I th- wanted to be back there part of the time, except I didn't want to leave her and my three babies. And uh, so I was in this city in this southern state. I won't tell you where, but it could be anywhere. It could be, it could be South Carolina, where we're sitting right now. But in this church, on one particular night, I got to preach for about 20 minutes, and God just did something special. He just turned over a bucket of honey in that place. And I'm telling you, the power of God got all over us. And we just got so happy, we just shouted. That's an antique thing in some of you. <laughs> Woo. We just got so happy, we just shouted. And that night, as people began to come, before they got up out of the seats good, God baptized 12 people in the Holy Ghost. The Acts 2-4 experience with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance. That's in the Bible, and you're going to want to receive that. Yes, you're going, you're going to want to receive that the promise is unto you. Say amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. But uh, there, there would be two more that would receive. But when these 12 people started receiving the baptism, it was in like two minutes, man. Bam, 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 bam. God was baptizing people in the Holy Ghost. And over to the side, there was a young minister. He'd been saved and for some time, and his young wife had. And he was in the ministry, and she was, she was uh, supportive. She was on the team, but she did not know what to do. And she was, she was in, a, in a horrible pit that she couldn't get out of. She was like David, Psalms 40. And she just stood over here weeping with her head bowed and tucked while others were worshiping in victory. She couldn't get any victory. And so I walked over where she was. Her husband was standing kind of near Man, he was full of the Holy Ghost and fire. The power of God was going through him. He was climbing Jacob's ladder two steps at a time. Wasn't no need to worry about him. So I walked up to his young wife there, and he'd been in ministry now for a couple of years. They'd been married for a few years, and they were still so young. And I walked up, and I said, hey, hey, look up here at me. And she was just defeated, you know, and she finally looked up, and I said, have you received the Holy Ghost like all these other people have? She said, no, sir, I haven't. She just cried. It was so sad to see what was going on in her. There was a darkness, a cloud that just hanged over. And uh, I didn't know her story, but as she looked around that room at some of those old Holy Ghost saints and some of those that just got freshly filled, she told me, she said, I'll never be like the rest of these people. I'll never be able to say what they can say. She said, my life, I so scarred it with sin. I I, I lived so ugly. I'd done some things that I didn't know the whole story. And she didn't tell me the whole story. But she had lived a very immoral lifestyle when she was in college and done some things that was very dark. And, And let me tell you, the devil was using that to just slap her around and just beat her and keep her defeated. You're no good. You're no good. You're, you're, you're ugly. You're dirty. Yucky, pooey. You stink. God hates you. How dare you come to this altar and lift your hands? You're not saved. How can You're just trying your best. And he kept beating her up and she was looking around saying, I'll never be what the rest of these women are. I'll never be like the rest of these people. The things I've done with my body. I'm, I'm so ashamed. You know what I did? I preached to her sort of like I'm preaching to you right now. I gave her the two minute version. And some of you are saying, boy, I wish you'd give us that version. I gave her the two minute version. And guess what? The entrance of his word gives light. I said, pick your head up, girl. Get your head up. God sees you through the precious blood of the sinless Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 
Do you believe in the blood I ask her? She, she began to attest. You know what? Hebrews 9, 13, and 14 hit me like a freight train running through my spirit. I heard the word of God say in Hebrews 9, 13, and 14, for if the blood of bulls and the, the, the blood of bulls and the ashes of a heifer, the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sanctifieth for the purifying of flesh, then how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. I've come to tell you, you can put your feet in the bloody footprints of Jesus and come in behind the veil, having therefore obtained boldness, brethren, by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which is consecrated for us through the veil that is to see us flesh and having an high priest over the house of God let's draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water and let's hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promise that's what Hebrews 10 says Come on, give him praise, everybody. Ura sari ekristure marisha rubu huseha shekoburus tamo kumbele hasehaya. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Basta kube vesela epakuste menvise ekristi kabari sahuma huya. Come on, stand up, everybody. Stand up with me. <laughs> Ooh. You know what? The power of God is here. I said the power of the Holy Ghost is here. Do you believe that? I said the power of the Holy Ghost is here. And he'll set people free. People that's got chains. Chains on their conscience. You're going to be free by the blood of Jesus. There's people you've confessed your sins. You've prayed. You've got over in a water baptism. You've been baptized in water. You released your faith and your sins are forgiven. But your conscience needs to be set free today. God's going to do something with you. You're not going back to that mess. No, you're not going back there. Come on. The blood of Jesus is going to sustain you and God's going to keep you as the apple of his eye. And some today are saved. But it's like you've got mired up and miry clay and in a horrible pit. And I see somebody today that made a cry this week. God help me. Sunday morning, God let me receive something to get me out of this horrible pit that I'm in. You know he's going to do it today? Jesus. He's going to do it today. If there's anything, listen, here's what we're going to do. I'm fixing to give an altar call. And people are going to move. People are going to walk down here. And it's going to be people that need to be delivered from a conscience that's been bruised by sin. You're coming out of that grave. You're coming out of that darkness. People that's wanted to receive the precious infilling of the Holy Ghost. Listen. But the devil has tried to convince you you'll never measure up. You'll never be worthy. Can I tell you something? He's right. You never are going to be worthy. We get it on the account of Jesus Christ. It cost him his precious blood to become the Holy Ghost baptizer is what Acts 2 said. But he's the one that wants to fill you more than you want to be filled. What you just got to decide is am I going to take God at his word? Some here need to be healed. But the devil's telling you, no, no, it ain't going to work quite that way for you. And for reasons that you don't even understand, you just feel like, no, the answer's just no. And it's your conscience that needs to be purged by the blood of the Lamb of God. If you're in this room right now and you need your conscience purged, if you need your conscience set free and you need the blood of Jesus to deliver you at the level of your conscience and give you real New Testament victory. I'm going to count to three. 
And when I say three, I want you to begin to move quickly. I want everybody here to begin to pray with me all over this room. I want you to intercede with me, people that believe God. Some of you brought someone today that needs a, a touch of God. And I want you to pray right now. Come on, let's start praying. Yes. Father, 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 in the name of your son, Jesus, we press toward you. We press toward you. We believe that people are about to receive from the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I believe you, Father. I believe you that when they move to this altar, that you're going to deliver and break chains and set people free. In the name of Jesus, oh, it's going to be great. I thank you for it, God. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. If you want the blood of Jesus to move in your heart and set you free from an evil conscience, if you want to be saved, delivered from addictions, filled with the Holy Ghost or healed, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, move now. Come quick, come quick. That's the way, that's the way you're supposed to come. That's the way you're supposed to come. That's the way you receive. That's the way you receive from God. That's the way you receive. Somebody says, how are we going to get this blood of Jesus on us? By faith. By faith. We're going to apply it by faith. We're going to apply it by faith. It's here. It's here. We're going to apply it by faith. Just come on in. That's right. Come on in if you want to. Come right on up here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Devil, you've had a reign of terror over people. And it's over. It's over today. No more. No more. No more. And in Jesus' name, I adjure you by God to break your reign of terror over these people that are coming to this altar now. Through the name of Jesus. Through the name of Jesus. Good move. Good move. Good decision. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo! I sense him. He's here, man. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Get ready to receive. Get ready to receive. Get ready to receive. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Hallelujah. He's here. He's here. Through the name of Jesus. Take care. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. Glory to God. Glory to God. It goes today. It goes today, dear lady. This is your moment. This, this is a divine prophetic appointment right now where your feet standing. God ordained this. And in Jesus' name, you'll be set free by the power of a miracle. I believe you, Father, to move through her heart right now. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Father, I believe that this is the moment for that definite change in her heart. And in her mind, hallelujah. Lift your hands, dear, and say, I surrender. Tell him, I surrender to you, Jesus. I'm yours. I'm yours. I take you at your word. I take you at your word. I believe you, God, to move in her life now. Hey, how many of you out there are full of the Holy Ghost? Come up here and get behind these. This is going to be good, man. You want to get close. You, you, you need to get in close and believe with me. God, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Just come on in if you're, if you're believing God with me. Come on in. Father, through the name of Jesus, by the power of a miracle, by the power of a miracle, loose her tongue, let her go. Through the powerful name of Jesus. Father, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, I believe God to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, every chain, every chain, every, chain, every, chain, every bondage, through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I confess all my sins to you, Jesus. 
I confess them and forsake them. I confess them and forsake them. And you said, if I confess them that you're faithful and just to forgive me of all unrighteousness. And through Jesus' name, I receive my deliverance. I receive the forgiveness of sins and the washing of the water of the word. In the name of Jesus, young lady, be loosed from your bondage. Be loosed from that heaviness that's plagued your life and plagued your mind. Be set free by the eternal spirit and power of God. In Jesus' name, receive him. Receive him. He's flowing into you. He's flowing into your heart. He's flowing into your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You believe he's heard your heart cry? He hears this from down in here. You don't have to pray, pray pretty words. Pretty words are okay, but it's what comes from down in here. And when you stood there with those hot tears running down your face just now, that cry that came up from your spirit went directly to God, and he heard that. He heard that cry. He sees the deep part of your emotions. He sees the part that you've been wounded, that you've been hurt, where the crushing blow has been dealt. There's a, there's a healing coming to you now, little lady. Oh, yes it is. Come on, receive it. Lift both of your hands say, enter my heart. Enter my heart, Holy Spirit. Come on in, Holy Spirit, enter in. Come into my heart. Come in, come in, come in. Hello, Through the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. From this moment on, from this moment on, Father, I believe you for a distinct and positive change. That the power of the high and the mighty, the low and the lowly will move through her now. That the Christ of Calvary will become so real and so revealed to her God, let Jesus become so revealed to her. Let the power of Jesus become so real to her. In Jesus' name. Father, through the powerful name of Jesus, every chain is broken. Every bondage is broken. Every heavy spirit, it goes. This is God's child. This is the sheep of your pasture, Jesus. She is the apple of your eye. And I bless her now. I bless her now. I plead the blood. I plead the precious blood of the sinless Lamb of God. I plead the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. I believe the life of Jesus comes into William now by the power of Jesus name through the power of Jesus name be loose from your infirmity. Be loose from the bonds of addictions. Be loose and set free. You're free William if you'll take it now. God's delivering you. I confess all my sins. I'm not interested in hiding nothing from you God. I'm laying it before you now. I'm laying it before you now. God, I can't do one thing about the mess I've made except turn to you. I'm turning to you. And Jesus, you fix it. You can fix things. You fix things. 
Come on, stretch hands up here and believe God with William, everybody. Believe God with him. God's touching him. God's touching his life. God's touching him now. Hallelujah. You're going to get some help. You're going to get some relief. Why are you crying? Why are you crying deep from within? I need some help. I need somebody to take this load. Jesus is going to do it now. By the power of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, every lying spirit of hell. Every lying spirit of darkness, every heavy, anxious spirit, we come against it by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Dear lady, I plead the blood of Jesus upon you. I plead the precious, sinless blood of Christ upon you now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All he wants from us is to surrender to him. Will you lift your hands with me like that? Say, I surrender, Jesus. Take me. It's who I am. It's who I am. And you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. God, I believe you. I believe you. I believe you. I trust you for that miracle. 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 In the lama ko shodno do mata da basada. Era va Cristo robori sara matai. Hallelujah. Now look at me. You have a future. You have a future. I want you to forget the past. Your future is as bright as the promises of God. You hear me? I said your future is as bright as the promises of God. The devil has lied to you long enough. In the name of Jesus, be loosed. I command you to be free in your spirit, man, by the blood of the cross, by the, pa- by the power of Jesus. Let him flow, let him flow, let him flow. See, that's what you need. Let the Holy Ghost begin to flow. That's where you need to be. Glory, glory. Everybody needs to go there a little while this morning. My Lord, the Holy Ghost wants to move in you. He wants to flow through you. Let him refresh you. Let him refresh you. Andara sakora bari sende la Maria. Embaraka, there he is, sir. There he is. There he is. We're getting somewhere. We're getting some. Yes, 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 yes. Father in his inner man. In his inner man. Total victory. Total victory. No more change. No more darkness. No more change. Healing. Healing comes into his spirit now. In the name of Jesus. Touch her by the power of your might. Deep in her inner man. She needs a connection to God. She needs a connection to your anointing, Lord. And I pray that critical connection comes now. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that very important connection takes place now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, from this moment on, I'm believing you to move in this situation. As it pertains to this precious young lady, I'm believing you, God, to move now. I'm asking you, Father, now let your spirit begin to stir. Let your spirit begin to walk in places nobody else can walk and say the things that nobody else can say. 
do what no other power can do. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus. You know what First John said? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, somebody says, who do I need to confess to? You need to confess it to God. Jesus is your faithful and merciful high priest. He's our confessor. We come before him and we say, God, I've sinned. I've sinned. I've, I've, I've breathed your spirit. And I'm going to call it what it is, a sin. I'm not going to call it a mistake. It's a sin. And I'm asking you to forgive me. I confess it. And I believe the blood of Jesus is enough. If there's anybody in this room today that's not right with God, lower that music just a little bit. Just a little. If there's anybody here today, if there's anyone in this room that's just not ready to go to heaven, you just don't sense in your heart that you're right with God. Listen, you can. Before we leave this room, you can know beyond any shadow of doubt. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you if you don't feel like you're ready to go to heaven. If you're not ready to die, you ain't ready to live. If you're not ready to meet God, you're not ready to deal with what's up in this world. God wants to give you great relief and great victory. And in Jesus' name, you can be free. You can be saved today. If you've never been saved and you say, I want to be delivered from sin. I want to be saved. I want to become a Christian. I want to serve the Lord. I want you to come down here immediately. I want you to come down here quickly. I'm just, I'm, I, I haven't been saved or I don't know but I don't know, Brett, if I'm where I need to be with God. Come here now. I don't know. I'm waiting just a moment. It'd be a great time to give your heart to the Lord, wouldn't it? It'd be a great time. Hallelujah. How many believe in God with us for a mighty move of the Spirit of God here? I believe He'll do that. I believe He'll move sovereignly. I want you to reach over if you feel okay about it. It, it. Just at least one person. If you can just touch one person beside you and bless them. Will you do that? Or maybe just take their hand, however you feel like doing it. Just bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, every person here. This lady wants God to do a regenerating work in her life. Father, we bless her now. We bless her now. We ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, move in her life with great grace. You said in your word, if we come to you confessing and believing that we would be saved. Your word tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 10, with a heart we believe unto righteousness and with a mouth confessions made to salvation and Whosoever believes on the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed, but they shall be saved. This lady comes confessing. She comes believing. Hallelujah. saved. I believe I'm washed. I believe I'm forgiven because of your word. Because of the promises of the Bible. I believe I'm saved. I receive. I receive in Jesus name. Has anybody been blessed here today? Wave your hand and praise him. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's do something. Let him know. Come on, you can beat that. Let's praise him. Let's give God praise in this place. Come on, let's lift our hands one more time. Hallelujah. Turn that up a little bit. Come on. Turn it up, guys.
Turn it up quick. Come on, turn it up. You are perfect in all of your ways. Sing it. You are in all of your ways to us. Come on, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. You are perfect in all of your ways. Come on, worship him. Turn it up, turn it up. Whoa, hey, you are Come on. Let's worship him one more time. You're a good, good father. We love you, Jesus. Come on, close your eyes and forget about that person. Come on. You are perfect in all of your ways. Sing it loud. You are perfect in all of your ways. Come on. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. If you agree with that, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, come on, hands lifted. Good Father, it's who you are. Oh, it's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. Yes, it's who I am. We worship you, Lord. It's who I am.